start recording. The test. Ooh, here we go. All right, key for class eight. Introduction to archetypes. Confirm and go live. Hello everybody, welcome to Keyforge class eight. It is March 20th. Here we go, we're doing it again. Um, today we're gonna talk about archetypes. What are archetypes? What kind of archetypes do we expect to see in Keyforge? What do these typical, arch actually it's not what archetypes. What archetypes do we expect to see in Keyforge? Um, what is an archetype? I think I said that. Anyways, um, why are they significant? How do we use this knowledge to our advantage? Um, you, uh, like I said, like I've said before, a lot of my knowledge comes from Magic the Gathering and that kind of stuff. And also, as far as I know, a lot of this uh, archetype stuff is a lot more focused on constructed. Um, so there is some definite variations and assumptions that we're I'm going to try and work through here with you guys that uh, minimize the amount of uh, bias that comes from the constructed focus nature of the archetype stuff. Anyways, um, archetypes. So what is an archetype? An archetype is, um, it describes the general game plan in more, or in more close, it partially describes the game plan of a deck, and then it also describes the, kind of the tempo of the deck. Um, so what I mean by that is, uh, sorry, is, uh, there's four, there's five major archetypes. There we go. Five major archetypes. Um, we have aggro decks, or in Keyforge we refer to these as fast decks, or racing decks, or NASCAR decks, whatever you want to call it. the decks that try to win by playing amber, playing as many cards as they can that generate amber. And aggro, com ah, sorry, aggro fast decks are generally characterized by their disregard for what their opponent is doing, um, and their only objective is to in Magic and most other card games, is reduce your opponent's life total as fast as possible. In Keyforge, that's going to be um, gain Amber as fast as possible with general disregard for things like card advantage um, and tempo to an extent. And yeah, mostly it's to you disregard card advantage is the key one of the key considerations. Um, you make up for another the key considerations in Magic, and that the and you make up for it in other ways. Um, but we, there, it's really hard to make up for card advantage. It's really hard to create card advantage advantage in general in Keyforge. Um, so it's, that's not really a characteristic in Keyforge aggro decks or rush decks. All right, so after that, uh, it's uh, you can gen generally it's thought of as the five archetypes. All right, hold on. Let's go. I'll go. I'll just name them all first, and then we'll talk. We'll use the blackboard. We have. Um, rush decks then we have mid-range decks which uh fall in the middle not i'm gonna say about 90 percent of every keyforge deck you open is a mid-range deck period um that's just the nature of a random deck limited formats it's very hard to construct it's already hard enough to construct a deck that fits into one of these archetypes mostly because it just takes such a dedicated deck to the game plan for it to really be like that is an aggro deck or that is a control deck or that is a combo deck um so mid-range tends to be like this catch-all term um these decks also tend some key ways you can kind of identify a good mid-range deck in other in other games is mostly that your decks are you have high value card decks. Um, this is these are again. This is going to be a lot of magic stuff. A lot of my assumptions are coming from there, and we're going to try and I'm going to try my best to convert it to Keyforge terms. Um, so a lot of like creatures that enter play and do a thing. Um, a lot of like two for ones on a small scale. Sorry, two for ones is a um, card advantage. You play one card, and it causes your opponent to have to use two cards to make up for it. That's a two for one. Um, so in Keyforge, this is pretty straightforward. Hey, thank you for the follow, Courier. I think that's, I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate it a lot. 
Uh, yeah, so mid-range. Hold on, my heater turned on. I got concerned you guys could hear that. Doesn't look like it. All right, anyways. Um, so yeah, mid-range decks full of value. Uh, you definitely, like, you want to play, yeah, Timmy, uh, yeah, Timmy Johnny Spike decks. Though those are a little different. Those are player archetypes versus deck archetypes. Uh, those describe how, so those are different player archetypes that describe how a player wants to play slash win the game. Um, any one of these archetypes, player archetypes, could be playing any type of deck archetype. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, midrange is full of value cards. You play your card, it does a thing that's a little bit better than what your opponent's things do, but it's not necessarily, um, falls into like, I'm going to go as fast as I can, or I'm going to try and grind the game down to inevitability, which is what a control deck does. Um, control deck's uh, objective is to generally get to the end game um, and create this, put the uh, the opposing deck in a position where they absolutely cannot win. And then eventually the control deck finds a win condition and that's it. Um, I have seen like maybe two decks I would actually consider control decks in Keyforge. It's so hard to actually create these kind of lock and inevitability situations in Keyforge. And also, the end game is such a hard thing to define in Keyforge. It's very hard to uh, be like, "Wow, this game is really this deck is really aiming for a specific board state that their opponent just cannot get out of." Right. Uh, really, yeah, it does depend on how you define control, but uh, that's what I think of. Like, there's different there's different types of eh, whatever. So, uh, did I say five types? There are oh, there's tempo. Uh, we, I guess there's Tempo. Sorry, that's the fifth one that we're not going to talk about, I guess. There's four that I consider for Keyforge. Tempo, every deck. There's not really Tempo decks in Keyforge. Hey, Mortivus, how's it going? Um, or there could be, I don't know. Uh, tempo is really hard to define. I'm not going to talk about Tempo today. Um, even though we are, I talked about Tempo in, I'm going to say episode three. Anyways, um, so, aggro combo control, or sorry. Hey, thanks for, thanks for subscribing. For two whole months, look at you, look at you go. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. I really do, I might have sounded sarcastic, but um, I'm new to this thing. You're the first person to get hit two months over here, so yeah, thank you. Um, anyways, combo, uh, so aggro, control, and mid-range, and then the final one I'm gonna talk about is combo. Um, that is just what it sounds like, you generally have at least in Magic, it's also pretty much the same in Keyforge. You want two card combos, boop, two cards. Um, this means like your deck needs these two very specific cards to be played at the same time or on the same turn or be interactable on the same turn during to do an effect. That's astounding in game winning. Um, generally they go infinite or in this case rule is six. Um, this is, uh, so this was the old lands deck, library access and the pen seed thing before library access got nerfed. Um, those, that, those two do create a combo in a sense where before the, before the errata library access, you could, you would use the pen seed or you'd have your active nepen seed and then you play library access. Then you, uh, use your nepen seed to get your library access back and then you play your, li your library access the second time. And now you're in a state where you get to play, draw two cards for every single card that you play. And the objective here was generally to get through the remainder of your deck and then shuffle and then draw your library access for a third time and play it before you run out of cards. And then at this point, I don't know of any decks that would fail to keep playing cards forever. Um, and now you're allowed to play all six, all of your logos cards until you played all of your logos. All sorry, you're now you're allowed to play all of your logos actions until you played all of your logos actions six times. And generally, I would say a lot of decks that had both library access and pen seed had a lot of options at this point to just lock out the game and win. Or if you're fortunate enough to get two more cards, um, a face shift plus any sort of key cheat, um, and the conditions to meet the key cheat, then you could just win the game on the spot on that turn. And that is what a true combo deck is, at least in terms of magic. Uh, Keyforge, thanks to the rule of six and uh, the more random nature and the non-constructed terms, uh, the Keyforge community has come 
to the conclusion that any two card combo that creates a very overwhelming um, advantage for yourself is considered a combo. Um, so this is why Martian Generosity and Key Abduction is considered combo decks. While this only generates one key, you could potentially add extra like Nepen Seeds or um, extra Martian Generosities or extra Key Abductions to kind of get back into this old draw your whole deck, play your cards, and then um, regenerate, uh, just keep going F forever and ever and ever and actually form a two combo. For the most part, generating one key and gaining a whole bunch of cards in your hand is a significant enough that you should just generally be able to win the game. Um, all for one, control the weak. Nope, oh, sorry, those only work in his channel. Uh, yeah, you can only do, the, I think you can only do those modifications in uh, all for one's channel. But yeah, so that's what combo decks do. Uh, the goal is to get to two, find your two card combo and in Keyforge play them and to get into such a state that you are heavily favored to win instead of just guaranteed win. That's really the main difference between most other card games in Keyforge. Um, if we think, if you're familiar with other, at least magic terms, uh, if you play limit, a lot of limited sealed and draft, you very rarely ever had combo decks. And so I think this is a good enough, um, close enough comparison that it's definitely not really worth arguing over, even though I'm bringing it up. I'm nitpicking a lot right now. Anyways, so um, a lot of people consider, so why is this significant? Why do we need to know about archetypes? We need to know about archetypes because of, I forget what it's called, but I'm going to call it a clock. I guess I like the term clock a lot. So um, every archetype sits on this clock, call it rush. And then if we go a little bit faster, um, so as you go around this clock, you uh, tend to increase, or yeah, increase the number of turns it's going to take to win. I guess we only have four, so I guess I can do a little bit over here. Um, we got mid-range. Ooh, that moved in my head. Good. We got control. And then you got combo. Okay, so. Uh, oh, all right, well, I guess it does happen. Oh, maybe you haven't, maybe you haven't paid your dues, uh, use the channel points. That might be what's causing that, Dave. All right, so um, this is an archetype clock wheel. I don't know. I, I looked it up a month ago when I was looking into archetypes, but I forget the terminology. Anyways, um, the goal on this archetype combo thing uh, wheel is to be one step in front of the other of the previous archetype. Right, let's put some arrows so we understand the direction that this is going. So generally this describes favorable matchups. Um, if you are the mid-range player, you should have an advantage over the... Uh... Don't you one step ahead? Yes. You want to be one step ahead of the... Because you're one step ahead of the rush players, you should have an advantage. And then if you're the control deck, you should have a favorable matchup against the mid-range players and then control the combo deck should have a favorable matchup and so on and so forth. Um, if you are two steps behind, how does that work? Then it's 50-50. And that's what I'm going to say. It's been a while. Ooh, all right, so yeah. So that's, uh, that's kind of the idea. Uh, this is important. So when you go and read your opponent's deck list, you kind of, you have to, A, you should know what, where, about where on this wheel that you fall. Um, not every deck, there's no such thing as an exact mid-range deck, especially in Keyforge. Um, there's definitely no such thing. I would, I would just argue that not most decks are mid-range and this thing is actually, in most cases, not really re relevant. Everyone's, uh, most people exist within like this range, honestly. Most, maybe, maybe, let's, let's say mid-range is actually the midpoint of these two. And then very few decks actually are like combo decks. You just kind of want to know what side of the mid-range line you fall on. I guess it's, I guess, uh, it, I guess it falls under the syndrome thing. If everyone's super, then no one is. Um, you just need to know sometimes, uh, the, 
the only real thing to know is that like where you really want to know am i the control deck in this matchup am i the a rush deck in that in this matchup uh when does this change could something in this match change me change the situation where i, I need to start ignoring or i need to start just rushing or yeah rushing there we go sorry terminology so that is the important thing um there's a concept called who's the beatdown um it mostly means that in, when two decks go up against each other they need to figure out who's the control deck and who's the rush deck um because it can just help you it helps you figure out which which type of plays you need to be making that's essentially what i was just talking about where uh you need to decide thank you where you need to decide okay is it time for me to step on the gas pedal and just start going for the win um or do i need to still keep focusing on slowing down my opponent in the beginning of the game is the goal so like i guess a good example i is uh when you identify that you're the control deck in the matchup you need to um thank you uh the, dave linked a very uh important article or a very uh I guess important, I don't know, uh, defining moment in magic the magic knowledge article of defining who, uh, it's called Who's the Beatdown. I think that, that's probably it. Anyways, um, so yeah, if, so in Keyforge terms, uh, I know I definitely lost at least one match this way. I knew I was the control deck, but I should have mulliganed harder for my stronger control cards, and I got distracted by uh, the fun stuff. Um, so like you definitely like sometimes you're like, okay, this, this deck is just way too fast for me. Unless I absolutely have my lash, lash or broken dreams on like turn two by then it, if I don't have it by then it might be too late or something like that. Yeah. It's super old and like, it's a very, like, it's a foundation kind of thing. Uh, everything kind of gets built off of that idea. Um, things have probably changed. I don't pay enough attention to like the theoretical side of magic. But a, a lot of people do always reference it. Um, and as far as I know, a lot of people don't challenge it too much, but they could be. I don't, like I said, I don't pay enough attention, especially considering it's constructed focused. Um, and I don't play a lot of constructed, period. Part of the reason why I play Keyforge. Um, anyways, so that is, yeah. So if you know what side, where you fall on this mid range rush control, kind of where you are. Uh, the best deck, yes, best decks certainly do have multiple ways to respond to the opponent. Um, that is, yeah, like I said, you got to figure out in this matchup where do I fall, and then also throughout the game when does the when does the table turns? Because uh, so at some point the control deck's going to decide, oh, I can start trying to win and start acting like a rush deck, basically. Um, that's that's kind of it. Uh, you probably there's probably other things you have in mind there that you're talking about. Um, so that is what I, have. I think that's it. Well, do anything else I want to talk about? Um, yeah. So you got a mulligan. So yeah, it could help influence your mulligan decisions. It could help influence. Um, do I need to use this lash right now? I'm just gonna harp on lash a bit. Do I need to use this lash right now to uh, make them lose three amber, but only play a couple cards, or am I far enough ahead that I can just ignore their amber, how much amber and how many keys they're forging, and start just focusing on my own side? Do I when? When do I stop? When does the control deck stop being control deck, and when does the rush deck need to be like, actually hold on, slow down a minute? Um, it's you're in a very rough spot if you're at the rush deck and you need to slow your opponent down. But uh, you could be going up against an even faster rush deck, or maybe even if you might have the tools in your rush deck to fight a combo deck, which tends to be a little bit faster in a different way. Um, so that is something to consider as well. Um, let's, uh, yeah, so that was definitely the I, reason why it's important to identify if you're a control deck or a rush deck, but it's also important to identify if you're playing against a combo deck, which are a little bit easier because mostly you're just looking for a couple key cards. Um, I'd argue at this point, I'm not hundred percent confident, but I'm just going to say artifacts that you have action abilities and non omni abilities are definitely symptomatic of control decks. Um, they operate a lot of long-term advantage, and that definitely falls in the control deck's wheelhouse. Um, so that's why Lash, Lash 
cave of uh, Screaming Cave, sorry, sorry, Lash of Burger Dream, Screaming Cave are very control deck style cards. I even argue um, Gauntlets of Command, Library of Babel, just pretty much they all, those last two offer very much smaller advantages than the this ones, but they are fundamentally, I need to, this game to go long and I need to keep calling this house over and over again to generate a little bit more advantage than I normally would. Hey, thank you for the follow, Keyforge Alchemist. I appreciate it. So that's one of the things I would consider when I was evaluating a deck list is how many artifacts do they have that are action or not on, basically ones that don't get sacrificed. Ones that they plan on using turn after turn after turn and their deck just gets, their their turns just get fundamentally stronger because they have more abilities on those turns. Um, that's definitely a thing I would consider control decks because there's very rarely any artifacts that generate amber. So there's very rarely any artifacts that will give you extra rush potential. They'll just give you more control options, honestly. Um, so that's something I would look for. Um, another thing is obviously the Amber control cards and board disruption or sorry, creature control cards are definitely probably a little, mm, not creature control. Um, honestly, to me, I would look at board wipes. Sorry, pinpointed creature control is probably um, a control deck thing. Versus board wipes kind of fall in between the two. I think um, board wipes fall are kind of like a, provide a little bit of the last little bit of oomph that most rush decks need to uh, prevent the control decks from closing the gates on them. Um, generally in Magic, this is like the reach that a burn deck, that a, the aggro deck will have. It's like the Lava Axe. It's the card that says deal five damage to your opponent and doesn't do anything else. Um, that's what board wipes to me feel like. Um, at the very end, when, you're, when your opponent has five eddies out on the field and you're like, okay, well, here is, here's, um, the common, here's the cooperative hunting plus that deals one damage to all your creatures plus a save the pack key charge. And there you go, I just won the game in a very last ditch effort. Um, kind of like, just like claw to the very edge. Just just get over that finish line because that's the goal of rush decks. Um, generally, uh, again, this is assumptions from, key, uh, from Magic, but a rush deck's goal is to... Uh, Generate 18 amber, period, and not any more than that. I'm going to generate 18 amber as efficiently as possible and as quickly as possible, and I'll just forge my third key somehow. And that's really the goal. Um, I mean, the, uh, uh, the better you are, so you can generally you're going to aim for a little bit higher than 18 um, because every deck has some amount of amber control. You can't just guarantee that you, all your 18 is going to be going to keys. But you need, so rush, de rush decks do need a little bit more than that, and they need to generate faster than that, and so. That's why high expected amber decks tend to fall into the rush deck category is because if you're expected to get 36 amber by playing 36 cards, then you only need to play eight half. You need to only get through half of your deck to get to 18. And so that's a lot shorter clock than what most decks are prepared to go against. So that's a rush. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's what rush decks look like, I guess. I lost my train of thought. Anyways, um, that's about it. And so I guess we're going to, oh yeah, so board wipes, I think board wipes fall in the rush deck category because uh, your control decks are going to set stuff up. Also, um, control, mm, maybe not oh, pure control decks, which don't really exist that much, um, are more in the mid range side, uh, are heavily reliant on uh, just reaping out to generate their amber. It, uh, so control decks are 10, the more controlling you are, the more ten, the more you tend to rely on like steel effects, um, too much to protect, doorstep, graft, those kind of things, the big amber control cards, or even like ones and twos, like, uh, Relentless Whispers, or sorry, Nerve Blast, Urchin, Ronnie, those kind of things that will just steal one or two at a time. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It, that is definitely a big reason why, um, Coda Rush is so strong is because there's just so much extra steel in uh, Code of Shadows that it's really hard to make up for it. You, you, uh, it's really good against opposing rush decks, and it's really good for yourself in that rush mindset. Yeah, that's definitely a very good point. Um, so yeah, all this ones and two stealing, and even some of the big stealing that kind of falls into this control category. It doesn't matter if you steal three if the mid-range control deck can also just reap for five every turn. Um, so once they get this board set up, the best answer that the rush deck has is just a board wipe because 
honest, I think honestly, most rush decks don't care. They're gonna play their hunting witch and their couple dust pixies or whatever or their nature skulls. At that point, they've already given up that these creatures are gonna survive. Um, they don't. I, I don't. I don't know anyone that expects a hunting witch to live over a turn. Um, anything like that. So I don't. Th I don't think generally in most rush decks that I've ever played, I've never thought, oh boy, I can't wait to reap with my creature. No, no. My whole goal is play my cards, gain amber, and then get out. Um, so board wipes are super helpful in disrupting my opponent's game plan to get back into the game in meaningful ways. Um, versus, you know, control decks, which will probably play board wipes, and that's more to fight the mid-range decks that are also going to try and reap in opposing control decks. But uh, control decks definitely probably want, uh, are probably more more looking for um, individual creature control, positron bolts, uh, draining touch, things like that to uh really remove high threat creatures which uh i guess that's more yeah um i'm not sure about rush decks they might have one or two creatures that reap really good or something like that but it's more of a mid-range and control thing that you need to take care about creatures um control deck if you're if you're fighting against aggro decks you need amber control if you're fighting against anything else you need some amount of creature control and some amount of amber control um and then obviously combo decks. If you're fighting against combo decks, then the thing you need to worry about is uh, disruption. So this is going to be your Ember Imps, your Born Its Touches, um, Succubus kind of help. Succubus are good against everything. Um, things. So yeah, definitely things that will minimize the amount of the minimize the options that your opponent can do. The minimize the amount of things your opponent can do because your combo deck needs to be able to do very specific things. If you can stop them from doing specific things. That's how you fight combo decks. So you're going to be going up against combo decks. You really want to look for look for your Ember Imps, Mother Daughter, better than Succubus. E maybe. I don't. I guess they're harder to kill. Um, let's see, Mother Daughter. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Mother Daughter guarantee that you get to play three cards a turn versus Succubus does not guarantee that your opponent's down to playing three card, uh, two cards a turn. Um, I that's that would be the argument, I guess. Or no, wait, sorry, you have the back the thing backwards. You say Psychopus is better than the two. I mean, I like Psychopus a lot. Don't get me wrong. I if I could, I would play ten Psychopus and laugh at my opponent when they have a hand size of zero. But I don't have a deck like that. Anyways, um, yeah. So if I combo decks, you want Ember Imps, kind of Succubus, Born Its Touches, Infernus is a can do good. It depends. Um, some combo decks. Um, if they know, I guess if you're playing a combo deck and you know you're going against inferences, you need to be very careful of not putting your combo pieces in the discard pile. Sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes they just end up there because you just need to play them. Like if you are playing a uh, Martial Generosity key abduction deck and you draw your key abduction early, you you can let it sit in your hand forever until you find the key abduction or the Martial Generosity or something, or you can just play it and hope you draw it again when you shuffle. Um, it really is matchup dependent um so yeah so this is the best anti-combo house because of it has all the tools there's very few tools um you might subtle mall is helpful archive yeah if you have archive archiving is also so i guess that's a very good point archive is the best enabler of combo in the game um if you can archive you definitely you try to archive your combo pieces because you want to you it's very important that you have both pieces at the same time and that is a uh, that was very helpful for coded decks uh the lands decks in particular uh combo decks end up chaining themselves yes they definitely do uh but the reason why they can do that is because they once they get their combo pieces sorry uh uh, I should read the whole comment. I don't know. You can see the, the people can see the comment, but yeah, combo decks end up chaining themselves by keeping cards in their hand. That is very true. I did that a lot. I played a lands deck. Um, I loved it to pieces. Anyways, um, you definitely do end up chaining yourself, holding out for your combo, saving up for it. Um, but you, the reason why you can afford to do that is because generally, once you've done your combo, you are either a win the game right then and there and it doesn't matter if you it doesn't matter i can you can give your your opponent can be on like 23 amber and two keys if you win the game when you combo you won the game the game isn't over until the third key is forged so if you if you have this sort of 
inevitability, you can kind of disregard what your opponent's doing. You can take a bunch of hits until you just build up the right combo. Um, they do, and, it, and that's definitely what the rush deck is trying to take advantage of um, against combo decks. It's one of, that's one of the ways you can just beat a combo deck. You can just win. Just winning beats the combo deck. Yankee decks definitely do that. Um, yeah, I agree. Definitely. Uh, I'm gonna play a Genka Duck later today, and I'll probably wind up doing that for you guys, um, just because it happens. Although Genka decks are a little, it's a little nicer um, if you draw the, the Martian Generosity early. You can just play the Martian Generosity because you're gonna draw so many cards. It's gonna push you forward to the to your reshuffle, and you'll likely depends on how fast your opponent's going. But you might just be able to afford to uh, hopefully reshuffle and find your combo again on the second time through. Uh, that's a nice thing about the Marsh, uh, the Marsh Generosity key abduction combo is that so long as it's you find your key, your Marsh Generosity early, you aren't too worried about finding the key abduction. You'll eventually find it, you'll eventually get the two together, or you're just going to generate so much advantage by having 10 extra cards for a turn. Um, it's not that big a deal. So that's a, that's Keyforge archetypes in a nutshell. So we're going to play some archetypes. We're going to go through some archetypes that I've got ready for you guys. Um, I think... Come on, move out of my way. Let's go over. I guess we're playing control deck first. Or actually, well, do a quick warm up game with uh, with the unpublished quantum, just in case anyone's new here. This is, I don't know, it feels, because it has the word unpublished in it, it feels very Keyforge classy to me. So we're gonna hang out with it. Take a good gander at this. Um, it's got insane number of creatures, 26 creatures. An okay expected amber value, very little amber control, so we're definitely trying to be a rush deck most of the time. Uh, it's very mid-range rushy feeling to me. Um, we do have a bunch of board control options, and a, a lot of our creatures are just big. Um, we do have two Dust Pixies as the smallest creature, but they're high value. And then um, Triple Quixo, we're very good at fighting um, this deck. Triple click, so Titan mechanic, double big twigs. We uh, this deck does not get off the board very easily. Its creatures are sticky, but very bad at reaping. Um, so our opponents aren't very often incentivized to fight into us. So that's a little, little downside to this deck. Um, we do have a Coward's End if we need it, and Library Access is always fun. But that's about it. So we're gonna start here with this deck. It is nice. This guy looks like he's been waiting the longest. We're gonna go with unpublished one. All right, so start the game. Uh, I think. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this opening hand here. Um, what set are they? Okay, they are. They are AOA. Um, in this case, I guess I will keep this hand. I like it. It's got. I definitely want to play Brobnar. I think I'm just gonna go Brobnar in this case. Um, I'm gonna start with the Fire Spitter, mostly because I think it's gonna do the best creature removal if we need it, or if not, we can just reap. Way of the Porcupine. All right, they're rushing us down. I guess. Um, they gave our Fire Spitter Hazardous 3, so we're going to go Brobnar again, we're going to Reap here, and we're just going to play some more creatures, and we'll just try and win on board, and we're going to discard this. Coward's End, it's not good for us. It's definitely not good with our Fire Spitter out. So our next turn is definitely looking like Logos, um, we'll let us phase shift this Anger to worry about their board later. Okay, so yeah. Uh that sounds like a plan to me. I could fight the Brend, but they'll steal all three. Or actually I could actually maybe I just go Brobner here. So what I'm thinking is um if I can reap for three plus anger to fight to do nothing really it will put us up at six and they'll have to respond and hopefully we'll just get to we'll go down to exactly zero amber and be able to kill the brand on another turn. 
So we do have a delta, right? That's something we consider. I'm gonna fight here. And we'll be set up to uh, kill off the tin down if we need to. Now, how's Hazardous 3? Oh, I missed that, the Hazardous 3. I thought it was, for some reason, yeah, whatever, doesn't matter. And Ronnie, cool, good for them. So we will go Ravnar. We will fight here, we'll pull them off check. And we'll reap, and reap again. Play the smash, we'll stun the Fang House because it now can have its picking of a lot of our creatures. And we're doing okay. So we'll probably just keep picking Bravenar until they do something. That really needs to be responded to. They got back their Ronnie. And they're going to reap, reap, reap. Cool. Oh, save the pack. Interesting. Look at them go. Okay, so we can't get the check. So we're going to go Logos because it plays the most cards. Unfortunately, it'll put us in a spot where we have to... We'll be at five in this... Brend. Actually, no, now they can't play the Brend. So we're pretty okay in that. Because if they play Brend the Fanatic, then we'll go to... Um... Oh wait, they didn't pick up Brend, they picked up Ronnie. So we need to go to six, exactly. Or not. Cool. And they life for life. Cool. That's fine. Look at them go. They're rushing. Um, We do have Bumpsy. Maybe we can save out four. Alright, so we reap. We go to five. This goes to six. Not enough for key charge. And we have to stun something. We will get a lot of cards out of our hand if we go untamed. Hmm. I feel like I want to go into Brobnar just so this lost in the woods, but we probably just need to play cards. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to play cards. Creep, stun, doesn't matter. Play this guy to the right. Go ahead and lost in the woods to get these guys back in my deck. Play a second big twig. Uh, no, sorry, I should discard this. We're not going to get to seven anytime soon. Unless they stop us here, but... Cool, here we go. Here's some good amber control. Or some of the best amber control this deck has. Uh, Warrior Armor and Bumpsy. Nature's Call. Cool, we get to forge a key. We're going to go with Brobnar. So we play the Bumpsy. We're going to play the War Drummer. Play the Bumpsy. We're going to play our Headhunter. And there we go. Cool. Um, hmm. Found on the fence with Duskrunner. We can't play creatures on our next turn. Let's see. What do we care about? We could. Yeah, we'll just go Brobnar again. We don't care. We get to fight for free. We don't want that Dusk Runner doing anything. And we'll just reap a couple times. And we're good. And we're catching up. Um, Trying to figure out... We definitely have to go Untamed soon. King of the Crag. That's fine. Smith. Cool. So we're going to go Untamed. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Or we're going to go Brobnar. And we're going to be sad. I guess we're just going to reap. These misclicks are killing me. <laughs> yep, yep, this is the uh, pro-level Keyforge play right here. That's fine. Um, so we're going to go untamed next turn for sure, 100%. Untamed. Uh... I think the plan is to, yeah, I'm just going to play this Hunting Witch on the right, play the Big Twig, then I'm going to play this uh, Lost in the Woods, I'll put back our play effect Brobnar creatures to get rid of these things, I'll play the Nocturnal Maneuvers for the hell of it, I'm going to actually discard this Piranha Monkeys, I want, I think, I'm going to hope, oh wow, Okay, please, please, please. Oh, <laughs> how's it going, John? Nice to see you. Yeah, awesome. Great. Now we get to go, <laughs> Locus. Uh, welcome to 
hunting witch that could. All right. Yeah, I, I, I am the beat down now. That's why the, all witches must die. And now they're very sad. Well, I mean, the, the burn the stockpile already hit. Whoa, and they reaped? What the? I will forge a key. Do they have... Pl uh, so at this point, they have two king of the crags. Where was my library access last turn? Um, anyways, they might have a key charge. I didn't look at their deck. Um, they could be going for that. My whole goal right now is to minimize their ability to uh, generate amber and have amber. I really don't care about these cards at all. They could maybe they could be going for uh, might makes right. Uh, fine. I'll take a look at their list. But there's, uh, there's no might makes right. I don't even see a key charge or anything like that. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to go Logos because I have a, a library access. I'm going to play this library access. And we're going to draw a lot of cards. Fight. 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 Didn't get any good hits. Fight. I'm not sure why I'm fighting. Actually, I know why I'm fighting. I don't want them to be able to do things. Also, we're going to reduce their key costs by playing this over here. Stale failed to draw anything, any good Logos cards. I guess uh, we only had one hit anyways. And we can, I guess, reap here. The fight's not going to do anything. Wholeheartedly disagree with this turn. That's fine. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I had, I, my opinion is that I had so much amber, I didn't really need to care about generating more amber. My entire focus was to stop them from being able to win, or to be able to catch up at all. Um, if I could minimize their amber, their potential amber, that was my thought. That was my thought process, at least. Um, but I, I didn't see a value if that was the argument. Oh, we were just playing. Oh, we are just playing a little. Oh, okay. All right, so that's a fun warm-up game. So we're gonna jump into the aggro. Sorry, not the aggro deck. We're gonna we're gonna do things in set order. That's coming up. Aggro deck later. No, all right. We'll do things in. Uh, we are the professors now. Hey, man, you guys are. Very uh, smart and talented Keyforge players. If you see anything wrong, we're all trying to learn together. I'm more than happy to, uh, anyone who has opinions, happy to hear them, happy to take them into consideration, um, talk about them. That's what we're here for. We're trying to learn together. All right, so I'll, I'll we'll, actually we'll go in clock order. Um, so we'll start with the Rush deck. Uh, this is M. Ubah, or sorry, Prowler M. Ubahans. I don't know. I just really like the name. And also, uh, expect the is really high, good SAS rating, all the yada yada yada. Um, this deck, a lot of expected amber because 16 print, uh, printed amber. Um, Hawks can gain a lot of extra. Amber controls okay. It's mostly like E on the fringes. <laughs> That's cool. I think you talk about Prowler a bit every now and then. Um, we've got yeah E on the fringes is good amber control. Not so good amber control is Evil Eye. It does its thing. Um, I have done fun stuff with uh, Ronnie and Manchego in this deck. There is, uh, you could put the Manchego underneath like Jargogol and stuff. I don't know, we'll go, we'll just play our cards, do our best to generate Amber as fast as we can and see what happens. If thing, if I could click, oh, it's not, not promising looking. Let's see. Prowler M. Ubahans. I just like saying Ubahans. 
Hopefully this works out. Uh, what makes your Prowler deck a control deck, in your opinion? Or why is yours a control deck? Yes. Well, that la last last game, I definitely had some uber hands. Uh, all right, I'm going to abandon this game. All right, new game. We'll just create our own. Hopefully, we'll get someone. There we go. Someone joined us. No, I don't have I don't have Screaming Cave. Or I do have Screaming Uh I do have a Screaming Cave deck. We'll get there. That's that's the control deck of the evening or the morning. Nice. I am very jealous. I have wanted one of those for a long time. Um actually I bought a really bad one for 15 bucks. It was a lot of fun. It's fun, but it's not very good. Um okay, so this opening hand we're playing for Amber Pips. I mean, Soul Snatcher. Whew. That's that's a risky one in my opinion. We can try it. We've got an EE on the fringes, they'll have to deal with it. Um I actually just like pitching Soul Snatcher to EE. <laughs> uh let's keep this one, see what happens. Uh so my current plan right now is to start logos. Jeez. Well, yeah, I'm gonna start logos because I certainly I'm not going to be able to keep up with this Shadow Council. Maybe I should have played these two creatures and just discarded the the thing. Discarded the Soul Snatcher right away. Yeah. There they go. They steal one from me. Umbra. Yep. Ow. We are, we are in a rough spot here. Uh, we can... We'll be okay enough. Go... Dis. Play E on the right. We'll discard this to steal one. Purge it. Done. Steal one. They'll just get. They're just gonna steal it back. But uh, we're gonna discard this rock rub and not purge it. I don't want to give them more stealing ability or this J Venda to have targets. Honestly, maybe that was a mistake. I guess the E is there. But the E did work. Follow that bet. Uh, one that was early spec on Guilty Hearts still sucks though. <laughs> yeah, I did go back. So when uh, when Worlds Collide came out, a lot of people were talking about um how they could how they could uh fight against all the Exalted Amber. Guilty Hearts was one of those cards that people... Guilty Hearts and uh, Word of Returning were cards that everyone's like, oh, go back and double-check those decks for uh, potential solutions. As, or as potential answers to the Saurians. Um, it didn't happen. It didn't... Uh, I mean, there were probably some decks that got a little bit better, but I also went back and found out that I have just no good decks with those cards. Uh, we're going to go Dis. We're just going to reap with this and get rid of the Shadow Council. Yeah, uh, for that makes sense. I was really, I don't know, it's Red Hot Armor that I was really down on. Or, I'm very disappointed that it ever got printed. But, uh, Word of, Word of Returning and Red Hot Armor feel very similar to me. You know, we can do this. And then we can, for the people at home. There we go. If anyone doesn't know what those cards do, look at them trying to stop us. We're going to go Shadows here. Unfortunately, we're going to wind up hawking our Hologramophone, but whatever. We're here for Amber. We're not here. Actually, they did a really good job rushing us down. But we, too, can play with Ronnies. Um, I think my Aromes are important. Let's see, add more value to my Ronnies. With the Breaker Hill. We will hawk. The hologramophone, gain some amber, and then we'll mug the, uh, I guess the Umbro, or mug the Vinda? Yeah, mug the Vinda. 
uh, I guess the reap and then maybe steal one, which I don't want. And okay, they can red alert. That's fine. Although I guess I didn't link over here. I didn't link the uh, card, the first one that started this talk. Um, Guilty Hearts. But yes, if anyone in chat doesn't know what Guilty Hearts is. All right, so we're gonna go Logos, and we're gonna hope for the best. We're gonna play uh, Hapsis. And I guess mine as well. It's the only creature we're going to play. Yeah, take that, Umbra. Move to the left. Remote access. Go to check again. How'd they get us off check? Nope, I guess we never were in check. So this is a pretty slow uh, rush deck, although our opponent's also rushing pretty hard. Guilty Hearts, thank you. Yeah. I feel like Guilty Hearts... I can't imagine Guilty Hearts being worse than Word of Returning. Although, a lot, I think my only deck with Guilty Hearts also has a Drumble in it, and I think that's the only... And so I'm very likely to murder my own Drumble on accident. If I'm not paying enough attention, I've definitely done that before. All right, what's going on in this game? They're zapping a thing. They're at six, going to seven. Stealth mode, no actions. That's unfortunate. I mean, I guess I was probably gonna go dis anyways. What'd they do? Oh, they zapped and then fought with uh, Kirby. Cool, I mean, I'm happy to lose a Kirby. So Guilty Hearts doesn't give you the amber. It destroys, oh, creatures amber, oh. That's interesting. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. That is a very important distinction. So we're going to forge our red key because, you know, the Baron doesn't actually exist. We're going to play, yeah, we're going to play this. We're going to play a spider. I don't care about the spider that much, so we're going to purge it. And we're going to fight the Umbra off the board. And we're going to play this upgrade. And now if they want to kill our... Now they can kill our Buzzle, but we gain some Amber. On our next turn, we'll probably just wind up archiving the Manchego here. And we'll save it for later. Because right now, um, if we play the Manchego, I'll have to call Shadows the very next turn, and then call Shadows a third turn in a row, essentially, to be able to play it on time. Probably. Uh, we need five cards or less in our deck in order for it to get to play effect. So yeah, we're gonna go Shadows. We will Pestering Blow the Ronnie. Going to Archive and play Mac the Knife. And then our next turn. All right, so we're gonna go one, we're gonna, if we go, okay, what do we have? We have a Ronnie in our discard pile, right? Yeah, we do. Cool. Um, no fear. They're at three. Okay, so maybe we can wait. Sorry, I was thinking maybe I want to exhume my Ronnie. This is very this is very worrisome, actually. Um, I'm almost tempted just to pick any any house to go. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I I have fear, lots of fear. This is this is a scary card that I don't want to ever do anything ever. The so dis. Uh, no thank you. Unfortunately, fine. I will increase my key cost by one. Done. Don't purge that creature. We will use this ability to kill the Rani. Binding Irons. Play this action. I guess we will get back... I'm thinking about... Rani works okay. Ronnie for check sounds reasonable. Um, yeah, I guess I guess this is right. Where are they are we the aggro deck? They went pretty fast. Yeah, we should go for the we should go for the thing. I was thinking about Breaker Hill, um, just to give us a little bit more uh, inevitability. Well, Ronnie steal one. I think the Breaker could have done a little bit more in the long run. Yeah, you're ahead. You're the rush deck. That's fair enough. Be the beatdown. Be one with the beatdown. 
You know what? I knew I had code monkeys. Maybe I should have done better to uh, set that up. Library of Palosaurus, huh? Is Mac, Mac is, you can use it as if it belongs to the active house, so it doesn't count as all houses, it is always shadows. That's a good point. Do I, can I even just wild wormhole a shadows creature in the play? Uh, no, I cannot. But I can wild wormhole a logos creature in the play. <laughs> yeah, I think cards, just gonna play some cards. Uh, we can at least get rid of this disruption counter, which is important, and we can archive our Ronnie. Which is probably worth it. Uh, no thank you. I'm going to do this first. Pull a left of Buzzle. Hey, how's it going, K-Dubs? And then we're going to do our Wild Wormhole stuff. Oh, yeah, we get to hawk that. Great. Uh, what are we playing? Prospective Grammar Bot. We're going to play that on the right to protect our uh, Mac the Knife here. And we'll just keep gaining Amber. Oh, we're at 12. Five. Oh, we're, we're going to overdraw here. Uh, no, I forgot about this. Swing? Yeah, I could fight. All right, I'll trust you. Fight. Make our keys good when we overdrew. Our Mantego misses, but whatever. We, uh, we're at enough Amber that we could just win the game. If they, if they don't have any more Amber Control, we've won the game at this point. That's a very good, good call on the swing. Someone's coming in home. Hello? Alright, well, my girlfriend's home. Unexpectedly. Don't tell her I'm playing Keyforge. Uh, we're going to pick Logos. Duskrunner. Um, take all the cards in the archive. No. So we're picking Logos uh, mostly because we're going to reap and we're going to enrage that guy. We're going to reap again. Yeah. I was actually, part of me wanted to pick Logos and pick up my Manchego or my Ronnie and then put it underneath the Jargogle, but that seems a little unnecessary. Uh, I guess we'll archive the evil. Let's just really mess up my archives. <laughs> Alright, they're done. Good game. Yeah. We definitely didn't want Jargo Reaping because of the Dusk Runner. But yeah, so uh, that's M. Uber Hans. And we're gonna jump into another game. Uh, next up, we're just gonna start late. I need to still probably need to end by 10. I'm sorry. And we had a long discussion on stuff. So I'm just going to, instead of playing two games each, I'm going to do one game each. So this is the next deck. Um, the control deck of the morning. Screaming Cave, Lash, Hysteria. Lots of lots of options. Uh, Toxin for more Ember Imps, Dust Imps. Lots of, lots of good stuff. Double Miasmas, uh, Whispers, Bait and Switch. Kind of covers everything. Lots of good board control. Lots of inevitability. Pretty much everything I talked about. Oh, whatever. I'm not sure if it's brood at this point, but to go into the casual room with some of these decks. But yeah, I'm always happy to play control the week or sorry a screaming cave deck. We got it. I'm done. Just gonna play the cave and have lots of fun today. Keep hand. I don't care about the rest of the stuff. Get the cave out early. Get to keep using it. Uh, after the next game, so three game, three games today, and then I'm done. What they do? They play remote access. Cool. I should. I definitely should. I agree. Uh, a lot of KeyForge class has not been checking the opponent's deck list. Um, I guess we're getting to the point. It's just hard. Um, here, I can do this. You guys can take a look at the deck list. I just don't want to spend a lot, especially on TCO. I've had people like leave because I was trying to spend my two minutes looking at their deck list, but here's their deck if you guys want to look at it. All 
All right. Um. So my game plan now is to go into shadows. We're just gonna play some cards, gain some amber. Uh, hopefully I can find a way to get this Ember Imp out and safe. Like, if I can draw on the Hysteria, that'd be great. Um, buy myself a turn to put a Blood of the Titans on it. It's something I'm trying to set up if I can, but... I guess with Screaming Cave it doesn't matter too much. I do need to get some board control going. What do they got? Armageddon Cloak. Cool. Fight. Look at them go. Alright, um... At this point, I think I'm just gonna go dis. I'll force them into... Hopefully force them into, uh... Mars once again. Except I'm gonna do that. I know now it's in my discard pile for it to get shuffled in, but... Maybe I could've caved first, in this case. I think I do want to draw it still. Here we go. Fear is a good response to that, but it's a little late. And we lost our Blood of the Titans, but it's okay. So hopefully they don't go up. But Alright, they're at six. We can lash them, but I don't think it's worth it. Um... We're gonna go Brobnar here. This is the game plan. We're gonna put some blood money on this guy, and our next turn we'll fear and stuff. And they can have a key here. The only thing that matters is the third key. Here we go. I mean, I guess now I have some redundancy here that doesn't do anything, but. I really want this Lash to actually make them lose three if I can help it. Cool. So we're gonna go dis. What do I actually want to do? Um, hmm. So part of me wants the Gongoozle to make some discard a card. Um, that's what I'm thinking about right now. And also, don't maybe it's just better just to stop them from having creatures. All right, we're going to gongoozle the Sutterkin, and we'll kill that guy, and we'll fear here, and I'll just cave now. Basically, maybe if they didn't look at my deck list, they won't know that, eh, why not, safe measures. They won't know that I have Hysteria. Depends. They might have forgotten about it. No reason to remind them about it. We don't have to. Marsh Generosity. Oh, cool. Uh, they drew six cards. Alright, so we're for Dark Key. We're going to go Brobnar. And we're just going to murder this creature, because why not? Get all on the board. Have something to do in case we have to, can't call this every turn. Although getting this Toxin out is going to be sweet. It's going to really help our uh, dis turns. We need to uh, forge a key soon. Uh, yeah, so we need to forge a key soon. So this Bane Switch does a thing. I guess we'll always be shuffling, so maybe we'll just get it back later. Um, so yeah, pretty sure just gonna go Shadows this next turn. We're not under any pressure. We don't need to kill this Marrows. We could by fighting if we wanted to. Um, don't plan on reaping too much right now. Grey Rider. Oh, I guess they plan on fighting. You death killed the Marrows? I think we have enough. We have enough uh, point of damage that we don't need to fight if we don't have to. I don't see us reaping too much right now. I'd rather not spend the time on it unless I have to. Yep. 
That's a good call. So yeah, shadows. Play our whisper. Or sorry, I don't know why I said whisper. Special delivery. Javelin. Now whispers. You're right. Maybe that's why I said that. And we'll just taunt them. They can know we have a bait and switch. I guess I could have held it here because we're going to forge. But. Now bait sucks. <laughs> yeah. We don't need it. We have miasmas and our cable. Cave and Lash will pull us through a lot of the amber control we actually need. And now we got the. Although I guess we need to kill this writer. Uh, I guess special deliveries. So we have to kill this writer because uh, uh, my plan right now is to Hysteria plus Ember Imp. And they can go Rider plus another creature to fight Ember Imp on their next turn. So uh, we don't want that at all. So I guess we, don't need, we still don't need Hysteria. I used to discard it, yeah. Uh, I agree. It was... It, didn't need uh it was overhyped it was it did its job and it definitely fit had a spot in the meta but it didn't it didn't need that what well, it didn't need to be done dirty like that all right so cool we've got we've got pretty much the best lock that this deck can do um i guess the next big thing is to try and keep our artifacts on the board so our shuffles give us miasma more often. If we can help it. Ooh, what they do? They poked the Ember Imp. Titan mechanic. Cool. Uh, I guess keys cost five now. We could. We could my. I think we miasma here. We want to force them to lose Amber to the Lash, I think. So, and it'll put down this uh, Moon Cursor, which will actually threaten the this Titan mechanic. Instead of just going Dis and Lashing. Um, I guess I could have Reap twice. But we want, we want the inevitability here. Although I guess we are ahead, we could just keep trying to push farther ahead. I might be having too much fun. Which is a problem I have with these decks. Uh, I definitely have a problem in other games where once I think I'm ahead or I have my grand master plan, I kind of ignore some stuff and get caught surprised. <laughs> get surprised or uh, they do things that there's an obvious flaw to my plan and they uh, exploit that. Yeah, expected. That makes sense. But now we have Steel 2 if we need it. And we guarantee our uh, yeah, cool. Sutterkin. Desania. This is all fine. They covered up their Titan mechanic. Maybe they're that's a peace offering. Oh, Titan mechanic number two. Okay. Not as much as a peace offering as I thought, but when I say peace offering, I don't know. I thought for sure that they would all right, yeah, so we're going to go Shadows, fight a bunch of times, steal some Amber. We're going to fight this Titan Mechanic, and we're going to fight this Sutterkin. Their keys cost five still, but uh, at the end of the day, they can't forge here. Just got to... Grandmaster plan. Place two cards from your hand underneath it. That'd be awesome. Sack to play both. Uh, I mean, that's just a strictly better master plan, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I guess that's the point. I do love master plan. Master plan is one of the most fun cards in the game. I wish I had my fire spitter. This mind worm wrecks me all the time. Um... <laughs> Oh, look at them go. Did they have a key abduction? 
Marsh generosity. No. Okay. Hypnotic command. All right. So that is the thing I need to worry about. Oh, all right. There they go. They already got it. Cool. They stole three from me. Ooh, plus beam buckler. They did it. Okay, so they went to six exactly. Uh, we're gonna go Brobnar here, mostly because it has a million cards. We're gonna play our Sound the Horns. Doesn't really matter. Oh, ooh, man. Do I care about them forging a key, or do I want to kill the Mind Worm? Um, mostly, I could fight the Crump and kill the Proliferator here, and that would pull them off check. But then this Mind Worm can fight stuff. I don't really like Mind Worms. Or I can fight the Fire Spitter into pretty much anything and kill the Mind Worm. Probably want to get rid of the Proliferator. Uh, they don't have anything to discard. Um, I think slowing them down. I about slow them down. So we gotta be careful where we place our stuff because we're not gonna kill the mind worm. The end of the day. Let's see, fire spitter will go first, and then the crump to the right. So now the fire spitter can't kill; can only kill the nexus here. We kill the proliferator, and we're gonna put the troll on the other end, and that way the troll can only kill the umbra. I guess this nexus can, or sorry, this toxin can kill both of its neighbors, but that is, it is what it is. Uh, okay, so next up, oh, they didn't go for it. Interesting. I guess they are trying to draw cards. They're playing, they want to be the control deck now. Um, draw cards, find answers to our board. We just are going to, I guess, reap for, try and get to the win. Um, although this hysteria is going to look really rude. Um, I don't care about this bean buckler. I'm probably just going to gungoozle the, gungoozle the Philo here so they don't get to draw extra cards on their next turn. Cool. Fight the fire spitter, sure. All right. I guess I have two things I get to activate. Um, we're gonna go dis. We're going to gungoozle. Yeah, gungoozle here. And then what else do I not want them to have when they come back down? If I could, I could fight this toxin and then Javelin this, but I don't think I care that much. Let's just keep getting rid of this guy. Reap. Play Hysteria. Just play out everything. Lash plus Cave. Let's see what we get. Although maybe that cave was a little extra, considering I just discarded all of my Brobnar cards, but whatever. We're here. We're here to play cave. We're here to use Lash. That's our goal. This is weird. We play a lot against two different AOA decks back to back. I guess AOA is making a resurgence on TCO. Library draw card. I don't expect them to pull a soft check. I don't think there's anything that Logos can do in this case. Unless they have a, uh, a legacy card. Neurosiphon? No. Uh, they'll need effervescent, pr effervescent principle at this point. Triple Sutterkin? We're playing against... Are we playing against uh, Mortivus? Alright. One more game. 
first we're gonna uh so this is the combo deck of the day martian generosity key abduction i played it yesterday or wednesday um i did play it yesterday too but either way um so that's the combo right there other fun stuff this deck does it's very uh so the reason it got played last time is because it's heavy in effective power and creature control and partly that's uh the double smite one sit against many and gray rider here which work super well with a uh, collector worm so i have high hopes for this collector worm worm i'd love to see it nature's call is also super good in the meta and we have a doorstep just in case things get hairy um, post pixie also did a lot of work for me um this week already with this deck so it's got a lot of a lot of little niche cards that we can rely on to do good work for us in the right situation and then we have um obviously the the main game plan armand t never phantom the seventh Um, I'll pull up the opponent's deck list if anyone wants to look at that in the meantime. There you go. They're playing Quill. Quill Prano, Museum Emperor. Um, this opening hand looks not very remarkable, but I like it enough. The store step's a little unfortunate to see this early. We don't have any of the key pieces of fortunate. The best part about this opening hand, it doesn't have any of our combo pieces. Um, oh, hmm. We're going first. I do like starting Proliferator, although I'm a player with Thias the Fierce actually. We'll protect our Proliferator when we get a chance. Um, so important things to know about this deck is it does have a Pimpaka Anga in it. So our left flank is generally, if I can help it, my left flank is generally reserved for Pompaka Anga, and that means my right flank has to go to uh, the Proliferator. Are they playing their own vert, their own? No, they're not, okay. I just see Mars. This is a three AOA decks in a row. Uh, so we're gonna go untamed here. We are going to deal some damage. Uh, we're gonna play Darna to the left because I really would love to put the proliferator right here if I can help it. And so I don't care about the Smarmo Swarm being out here. Here we go. This is a little unfortunate, but we can definitely go Sanctum if we really want to. Um, gain some Amber, destroy their board. Untamed looks okay. We could fight Fight here, and then nature's call, soul keeper, huh? So, two soul keepers. Interesting. How does that have four damage on it? Okay, oh. All right, well, that plan's over. Huh. All right, I'm just gonna go Sanctum and gain some Amber, play some cards, force them to make decisions. Unfortunately, this doorstep does absolutely nothing. We'll play Smite. All right, so we played some cards. We just need to, at this point, we uh, need to get find, start finding combo pieces. Maybe I'd be a lot more. I'd be a lot happier if I had something better amber control. We lost our best amber control. We do have uh, Maruk the Marks and Protect the Weeks. Wow. Okay. So, hmm. We're gonna go untamed. We're gonna reap. Yeah, we're gonna reap. We'll heal ourselves. We'll play a there everywhere. We will put back this doll. And then we'll put both of these back in their hand. Play our Pompaka. And hope for the best. That's all we can do. We're now in check, which is good for us. They can replay their Ortanu, which is unfortunate. We don't have a good response to it anytime soon. Um, I guess our creatures are bigger now. 
Darna isn't big enough. Uh, Proliferator certainly isn't gonna. We're not fighting with it. Oh, okay, researcher. Although now our creatures are bigger, the healing blast can hopefully do more work in a turn or two. So, given that, if we're just gonna try and race them. I think we're ahead. We need to keep playing cards. We get to play more cards. So our combo decks, we need to play as many cards as we can until we find our combo pieces. And if we gain some amber, um, if we can get the two keys and then find our combo, we basically win the game. We're gonna four. So that's our first key. So we're going to combat pheromones and then play the stormcrawler and the proliferator. And they now have to uh, be very careful. They have to I think Proliferator, especially against a Martian Generosity deck, you have to, you can't let this live a turn. They could just have Martian Generosity and it's over. Um, so that's what I'm thinking about right now. We don't have any Mars cards in our discard pile. I'm trying to think. So I want to find. Ideally, I can find four damage to put on this Stormcrawler, so I can Healing Blast it. That's something I would like to do. Also, this Life Web is probably going to actually hit, considering how many cards are in their hand. So I might just go Untamed on this next turn. Gives us lots of op lots of Reaping. We also are on the Reap plan. I guess they picked up whatever they put in their archives. Oh, they're fighting. Oh, they're just going to... Murder. Are they going to fight the director here? Oh, okay. They're also put, building a slot. That makes sense. Giving themselves another card drop with Feel of the Researcher. So they played one creature, two creatures, and they still have the Helper Bot, which they're probably going to play or Tanu again. They might fight here. Um, or no, they have to use Bindings. Uh, Oh, they played Orbital Bombardment to deal 6 damage to creatures. Uh, they, so they have a Mind Warper in their hand, a Phloxum Spike, and a Carpet Phloxum. So don't kill all of their creatures is the short end of that. Feel of Trades. So I guess they're not playing 3 creatures. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Alright, so... What do I want to do here? Uh, I want to play cards, so I'm going to go Untamed. We're going to play this tree. We're going to Reap. We're going to heal. And we'll play our Life Web, and we will not use the Combat Pheromones. Awesome, this is great. So Grey Rider can make the tree not fight anything relevant. We need them to play bigger creatures so we can get this Healing Blast to work. I'm very excited to make Healing Blast work. It's going to help us burst ahead to our key two. Um, so yeah, we don't want to play key abduction if we don't have to. This is, uh, right, who said that early? Was, talk was talking about how combo decks chain themselves and we're definitely kind of in that spot right now. Oh, see you later. Thanks for stopping by. Wretched All Streak. And what else we got for us? One more one more creature, and it's not enough link, and they get to uh, potentially have a, uh, whatchamacallit, a succubus, essentially. An elusive two-power succubus. Oh, I guess they left. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, hmm. Well, we can try one more game real quickly. Everyone's got to go. We're almost there. We'll have probably two or three more turns left in that game. All right, our opponent's deck this time around. Atlas. Well, uh, what are we doing? We are going to... We're going to Mulligan. This hand doesn't do a whole lot. Like, we play in a bond, and we put... We don't want to put Protect Weak on it, and these don't do anything. 
Um, Pampaka plus thing, yeah, we're gonna mulligan this. Didn't get much better, but it's something. Wow. I I haven't heard that, but you know, it's California. <laughs> yeah, at least you get to see my face, right? Yeah, California recently went on full, not full lockdown, but uh, everyone stay home if you can plan. And so for indefinite time, <laughs> I thought you just wanted to learn how to play Keyforge. Yeah, so yeah. Oh yeah, uh, so we're waiting for our opponent to, uh, I guess, read our deck list. So we can go take a look at their deck list. Um, oh, nope, they made a decision. All right, they picked Brobnar as their Octave House. So they play Gravel Guts. Um, we're going to go Mars. That was the plan. We're going to play this Mother Gun. Some little bit of advantage in the long run for us. Um, and the Stormcrawler is also big enough that Gravel Guts can't just kill it. Plus, um, if they reap, it gets stunned. So this it, it's a really good... It negates a lot of the value that Gravel Guts could have had on their first turn. So I'm not, not unhappy with how we started this game. Our next play is going to probably be... Uh, we're probably just, we're gonna have to go Sanctum. Get rid of these cards in our hand. Start uh, probably play Maruk plus a Bond and then smite the Maruk. It depends if they so smite ready and fight with a creature and it deals two damage to each of its neighbors. Uh, Maruk whenever it takes damage, whenever it has armor that is prevented, or whenever its armor prevents damage, um, it captures that much. So hopefully they generate two amber this turn and we can just capture all of it um because the bond's gonna give sorry yeah a bond the armor smith is gonna give rook the mark an extra armor so they'll have two armor or they decide to fight okay interesting gravel guts fight stormcrawler do they do anything else so yeah uh Merc's mark will have two armor and when it fights it will Capture two. Floor is lava. Cool, that's great for us. Um, because all of our creatures are gonna have armor, I guess except for a bond here. So we're gonna go Sanctum. A little unfortunate actually. Um they didn't gain any amber. We certainly don't want to smite our stormcrawler into gravel guts here. So right. Um so in this deck a bond normally winds up picking up the card Protect the Weak, which is an upgrade that uh gives a creature plus one armor and taunt. Um and so if once Merc the Mark if Merc the Mark there it is, this card right here. So once Merc the Mark has taunt, it'll have a extra armor and it'll be protecting two of these valuable creatures. Um Depends on what they do here. I might... Actually, no. There's pretty much no depends on what they do here. I need to, uh... Hopefully get this Darna out. Gain two... So Darna gains me one Amber for every damage creature I control. Um, both of these are damaged, so we'll gain two Amber by just by playing this card. And get some more guys out. Um, and Darna can also reap to gain one... Uh, sorry, can reap to heal. And it would be really great if we could start healing our Maruk here. Draining Touch. All right, so they're done. So they play Draining Touch. It's a card that says uh, destroy a creature with no amber on it. So they're going to get rid of that Maruk the Marked before it gains amber. That's fine by me. Um, I think I'm going to continue with the same game plan anyways. Yeah. Darn's going to gain less amber. But we're going to gain some anyways. Uh, we're just going to play a lot of creatures that don't deal, that aren't good at fighting. Sorry, I say that because Stormcrawler, when Stormcrawler fights, it only deals one damage. And then Tentadolin over here also only deals two damage when it fights. Cool. So we got some good cards coming up. I'm actually really excited about this. Um, a Mother Gun plus, so Mother Gun, we can reveal the three Mars cards in our hand to deal three damage to Lilith all here. And then Beam Buckler, when it comes into play, it'll deal an extra two points of damage. On top of that, um, I think I actually want to get rid of this caffeine. It's a little bit more important. Um, so that's, I don't care about the Lilith all that much, but caffeine is going to blow up some of the important 
cards in my on my battle line here. So we're gonna do Mars. We're gonna use this ability. We're gonna show off our three Mars cards that are coming down. We'll play this beam buckler. To the right. Blow up the caffeine. Move to the right. Great. Um combat pheromones. Plus the shock worm. And then we'll reap here. And that's our turn. Great. Um, so yeah. We now have uh fortunately we have this nature's call. Which can uh return ideally it's gonna return this darn into our hand, plus whatever they play. And we'll get to replay our darn and regain some amber gain some extra amber. So uh Marmo Swarm is gonna fight something and Tentatalin is gonna fight something. They're both gonna gain some gain some damage on themselves. Darden's gonna reap, heal one up for a little bit, then we're gonna replay it and gain three, hopefully gain three amber off of that play. Comps' Horspect is a creature that must die as soon as possible. So that is one of our fight targets. We're gonna go untamed. We're gonna play this Pampaka. We're left. Um, tree will only deal two damage. So, regardless of how big it is, so we're gonna fight the comps though, and then tree is going to fight Lothal just because it's smaller. We don't want the tree to take unnecessary amounts of damage. Darna is going to reap and heal. It only heals for two. I like the uh, I like the uh, the Marma Swarm a little bit more. I'm gonna play this Nature's Call, and we'll return three different kinds of creatures. To, oh, mm, they can keep the Lilith, I guess. Because uh, I want to return my Darna to gain three Amber this turn, and they conceded. All right, well, I guess we don't get the combo, and that's it for me today. Um, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, once again, giveaway happening um, every week. You uh, clip my biggest misplay, tell me what it was, and ideally how I could prevent myself from making it, and I will send you one of these Keyforge decks. Um, I'm going to send them all out at the end of the month. Uh, mostly this gives the people on YouTube a chance to uh, also clip or send me a link uh, to timestamp linked to where when it happened. Um, you can send them to me on Twitter or on any of the discords that I'm on, primarily the Reapout one, because i got to promote my team's, my team's Discord, but I'm on every single Keyforge Discord you can imagine, except all the English-speaking ones. I'm sorry, I don't speak foreign languages, because uh, I'm a dumb American. But, yeah. Um, I'm Andrew in most of those, uh, or maybe One Star something uh, on other discords. But with that, thank you guys so much for showing up. Uh, I really appreciate it. And, uh, oh, special stream tonight. Me and Sophia, who came home early, are going to play spooky horror games tonight. Um, I'm not sure what time, because I thought she was gonna, we were gonna. I thought we were gonna do it when she got home from work, but she's home now. So we'll figure it out. Uh, I'll pay ten, I'll, I'll post that on Twitter when I get there. But yeah. Um, oh, also super sorry that there wasn't a new uh, GMI Prime Championship uh, YouTube video this morning. Or actually, supposed to come out in four minutes. I it's not ready. I'm gonna try and get that out later today, maybe tomorrow. Unfortunately, I might have to go out tomorrow with the rest of the. With the top eight stuff um and the top eight stuff has all commentary the the round five the round five video does not have any commentary so i'm sorry i didn't get out today um i kind of fell behind this week um thank you so much for watching and i will see you later